listening to Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Sanzil. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I'm sorry, the correct answer was MLP Silver Quill. Okay. And also joining us today is Torterra. So this is way past. Thank you, because you also got the wrong answer. It is actually Torterra1324. <laughs> Alrighty then. This is gonna be annoying. So anyway. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> okay, anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 16, A Trivial Pursuit. In this episode, Twilight's hope of keeping her trivial trot winning streak alive are waylid... Waylid? Is that how you say it? Anyway. Uh, way- waylaid. Waylaid. Oh, okay. That's a new word for me. Waylaid when she is paired up with Pinkie Pie, who has never been to a trivial night before. Oh no, this is bad. But before we head right in, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, this is sort of a farewell to classic Twilighting. It is basically a reason to have Twilight go off the rails crazy and have a bunch of really fun expressions and then give it a give it a, a proper send off before she becomes a more composed ruler of Equestria. Though I'd like to believe that a little bit of tw- classic twilighting can still take place on the throne. All right, all right. <laughs> I, I bet classic twilight is going to emerge soonish. And Tara, what about you? Well, I kind of what Silver said. This is a nice little episode to end the whole twilighting thing, or. Uh, as some people also like Twily Nanas. Mm-hmm. And at first impressions, I, I do like how Twilight is in here, but at the same time, it's like... Eh, I'm, it's like another mixed opinion on this kind of episode, but like we'll go into full detail later. <laughs> all, right, all right. And as for me, this episode was... strange. It's like, I get what Twilight's doing. I, I, I get what she wants. And I can't blame her for it. But at the same time too... Let's just say that this episode is an era of comedies where Twilight is her own villain. (laughs) So anyway, if you have not watched this episode, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoy the show. And well, let's hop... The answer is, I do. (laughs) Let's hop right into it. So we start off the episode with Spike talking to himself. Well, the reason why is because, you know, he is building up confidence to talk to Crazy Twilight. And when he goes into the library, Twilight is not there. He finds it strange and decides to leave the library and bumps into Twilight. Twilight is being crazy and yeah, let's just say that Spike wants nothing of this and decides to leave her alone yes so the next day or the next morning spike and twilight goes to the trivial pursuit shop rack whatever it is that's new uh okay so they head there and while they go there twilight explains the rule a very comprehensive rule about the game and whatnot so anywho, once they hit there, they meet up with ponies who are participating in the game. And I am going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, first I'm afraid I have to dock you a point. Because the Trivial Trap Pursuit is taking place in the Hayburger uh, restaurant. Really? I believe so, yes. Yeah. But well, we'll, another thing too, Silver, you'll have to d- deduct a point from him because he said trivia night, even though it's clearly during the day. <laughs> but it just says, it says in the synopsis, not my... That is technically true, which is the best kind of true. <laughs> uh, but uh, honestly, this whole thing, there's a game here in Colorado, and I'm sure in, in many other states, Geeks Who Drink. Oh, God. I've actually never heard just, of that. Oh, 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 you. Ah, I'm sorry, but you. I'm sorry, but I'm I'm taking the Japanese uh, form of uh, trivia. You reward knowledge. We punish ignorance. <laughs> oh no. 
So basically, it's just get a bunch of folks together for trivia night, but it's very geeky things, and of course, there's liquor involved. It's the perfect plan. <laughs> but you know right away that this is going to be a Twilight going bonkers episode, if only because of that opening with Spike in the li- and her in the library, and Twilight in the zone, wanting to go to sleep in the zone, dream in the zone, go to this contest in the zone. And poor Spike, he just knows what he's in for the whole evening. You say poor, poor you say poor Spike. I'm gonna say poor Luna. Just imagine her going into her dreams, trying to relax by her organizing her books. But no, she's in the zone. Oh God, no! <laughs> Luna comes to Celestia the next day. Can we retire tomorrow? <laughs> the only reason not to is because I fear putting that maniac in charge. <laughs> We haven't really gotten to see where they introduce all the opposition. Mm, 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 mm. True, true. So, so that's it for now. All right. And Tara, what about you? Well, I actually like how at the beginning, usually Spike's all quiet and he, he kind of whispers, I guess you could say. But no, this time before he enters the room, he's, he's like, I'm going to put my foot down and tell Twilight this and that. Even though she's not actually looking through all the books, but she's still got that crazy look in her eyes. And it just reminds me of Lef- Lesson Zero. But I do like how the next day she's like kind of calm and she... she She's reading all of these rules, which, I mean, for one game, that's so many rules. <laughs> you, you, dear good sir, have not played Magic the Gathering. I don't play Magic the Gathering. And that's why you have not seen it. The... <laughs> How is that wrong? Punish ignorance. Here <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy>, carry on. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's not really much to say uh, at the beginning. I mean, I do like how I'm probably going to get this wrong but i'm gonna try if i say this right is it tara strong okay i was about to say tara but no it's tara okay uh i do like her performance at the beginning where she's uh basically being insane <laughs> but yeah not really much to say from here on out until uh, we continue on all right then and as we move on i'll introduce you to the contenders or the participant of the game into this game we will have Bulk Bicep, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Mont Pie, and Mont Briar. Let's see, Sunburst, and Fluttershy. And I believe we do have a few other contestants. Uh, Cranky Doodle, Matilda, uh, who else? Time Turner? Yes, Time Turner. Was that correct? Yes. <laughs> and I think that's about it. So... The rules are simple. What? Sorry, you you missed one. You for who? You forgot the host. Oh yes, uh, and hosting the game will be Granny Smith. So rules are simple. Um, <laughs> game uh, participants will be paired up at random, uh, so to avoid cheating and whatnot. And also, uh, there are comprehensive rules upon rules upon rules and whatnot. Basically, Tyler is just making it too strict for fun but anywho uh, we see that the participants are randomly picked from a jar so we get the pairing of uh, Sunburst and Cranky Rainbow Dash and Matilda Fluttershy and Bulk Mudbriar and Maud which is a (laughs) A statistical fluke, according to Twilight, uh, Applejack and Time Turner, and also Fluttish, no, Twilight and Pinkie Pie, and that's a problem because Pinkie Pie has never played the game at all. Oh no, this is bad. This is bad for Twilight. But anywho, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. So. Twilight decides, okay, um, yeah, I, I have to carry the slack for this one. So as they start the game, we get to see Pinkie Pie's erratic behavior costing the game with a negative one point. And who knew that you could get a negative one point in the game? So as time goes on, we get this ping pong match of Twilight trying to do damage control while still keeping up a head. And as time goes on, or as the game goes on, we see the point as it is, with Twilight's team having 3 points, Mud and Mudbriar having 6, 
Fluttershy and Bulk have nine. And, well, you get a point. Twilight's team is in the back, which is bad. And uh, how do you guys feel? Like, should we just say that this is going to be a repeating factor until we go to the refreshment and bathroom break. I guess we can go with that because it's really the same thing throughout the whole thing uh, episode where it's just the same old stuff. <laughs> yep. True that. So I'm just going to summarize. Twilight's not having a great time. The rest of the group are way ahead on points until, well, lunch break. So I'm going to pause here. So, Tara, what do you think? Well, I mean, can we all just appreciate... Uh, I mean, I don't know if Silver will like this, but we all like how Fluttershy did a pun about how while she was brushing Angel, she talks about how she's been brushing up for the competition. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was good. And she has a lot of sass. Yeah, she, she's very sassy. <laughs> <laughs> But then you could also see how much Twilight is panicking that she could possibly have Pinky as a partner to the point where she's writing or scribbling down so fast that smoke starts erupting. It's like, whoa, like, you're very fast there, Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like like I said before, how uh, Tara Strong's performance, she's so crazy and insane that, she, and, you know, I mean, she, Twilight wants to win so badly and it's just like, come on, I gotta win. You're so insane. <laughs> And then she's getting up to the point where her mane's being all frazzled. Yeah. And and you can't really say much from here on out because it's basically the same thing where they get the wrong answer and then they try to answer another one and then they get it right and then they get it wrong. And it's like, yeah, okay, can we move on, please? Yeah, yeah. And well, Silva, what about you? Well, first off, one, I do thoroughly enjoy uh, a good pun, especially from my favorite pony, so yay. But... The, a lot of the fun in this is just seeing how the characters bounce off one another. I especially love the line, Team Apple Dash is pr- practically unstoppable. <laughs> Which, I'm just like, oh, I don't know if they're hinting at the season finale, but oh, oh, oh that's funnier in hindsight. <laughs> I know. And it is fun to, to see, like, bulk biceps get try to give Fluttershy a high hoof and knock her <laughs> over. Mudbriar and Mod Pie. Good, good grief! There's it's meant to happen, and then there's just the gods are conspiring. But I will say, this episode kind of relies on Pinky being at her worst for a good chunk of it, because basically she's being unreliable, impulsive, uh, inattentive, flighty. It's highlighting her worst qualities uh, in order to to drive the story, and I guess ever since. Uh, Philly Vanilli, I've worried about that. I mean, Pinky Pinky's probably one of the easiest characters to write poorly in this show because people will often make her weird or flighty for the sake of comedy, whereas I think she has a hidden depth to her, and this episode doesn't really get to show that. We established in Too Many Pinkie Pies when it's for a friend, she can really focus. She can really step up. And if she under, and I think she understands how much this means to Twilight, I think. Because if she is aware, then I think she'd go all in. True, but at the same time, too, this is her first game of trivia, and when you say games to Pinky, uh, I I don't think trivia is one of those games that she excels at. Well, that's true, but then, but then she's also chiming in with the wrong answers a lot. Well, uh, giving them negatives. True. I mean, her first, the first question is um, name the character for the hearts, uh, hearts and hooves tale and whatnot. Who didn't like um, what you call this hearts and hooves? That would be Scrooge. But um, she says no, nobody doesn't like. I mean, technically true, but not part of the answer. I mean. This, this is one of those episodes where if you don't really enjoy Pinky, you're not going to enjoy this episode. This this highlights her worse. But anywho, I'm going to carry on. So anywho, um, during the lunch break, Twilight pulls Spike away 
asking him for advice on what to do with Pinky. And Spike just says to Twilight that this is a game you should just relax and uh, enjoy the experience. And Twilight interprets it as, oh, I should use the rules to my advantage. And she does. She disqualifies Cranky Doodle and Sunburst team because uh, Cranky is sleeping. And let's just say that the game is not fun because Rulebook Twilight is making the game very unbearable and pointing out rule uh, infractions and whatnot. And wow, let's just say that it's very, very bad. By this point, Twilight is just being a hog on the bell and just not giving Pinky a chance to play. And yeah, with that, game sucks. Game really, really sucks for Pinky. Oh yeah, um, Twilight did a big mean thing to Pinky and that is ask Pinky to ask Mod about rocks. And according to the rule book, that is a big no-no. And that got her disqualified. And technically, if Pinky is disqualified, Twilight is disqualified too. But since... Let's just say the rules are convoluted and somehow Pinky, sorry, somehow Twilight and Sunburst are on the same team. What? I guess the the theory is if you're two members who haven't been disqualified but their team is gone, they can unite. So Twilight just maneuvered to have one of the best possible partners. Which is true. And Silver, would you like to take over for a bit? Because well, this is going to be a ping pong match between almost the same thing and a bit of sprinkle on your end would be nice oh believe me i can i can add a lot of sprinkles because i have had surprising experience with this concept the spirit of the game versus the the rules of it and i can give you two examples because i see a lot of this some people just have fun winning and i gotta ask the question is it fair to say oh just have fun even though you're losing well, some for some folks that's not an option. There was there is a kickball tournament uh, here in Denver, and there was actually a documentary made about one of the teams, and these guys took it really seriously. I mean, I think the aggression went too far, especially uh, one of the one of the guys says, you know, people say, oh, just have fun. I have fun winning. And they were apparently very machine-like in their gameplay. But this guy, who said, I have fun winning, he spat on another player because he was so competitive. Oh, that's not good. And I was like, I watched that and I thought, what a bunch of jackasses. I mean, there comes a point where, okay, you have fun winning. Congratulations, your pursuit of fun has turned you into this horrible human being. I fear that's the road Twilight's going down. Now she's so eager to win that she's actually throwing her friend under the bus and using the rules as a weapon. And yet at the same time, there's a very uh, real technical skill to what she's doing that highlights why she's so good at this. And as a further example of when winning is so dang important, I will look to Halo Reach at a game I played. This was early on uh, when I was trying out the online gaming world. Played a match where I was up against a a clan, which had more team members than the game permitted. So some of their team was put, some of their clan was put on my team. Now, it was a complete rout. Crushing defeat, in fact, uh, for me me and, and my group of randoms. But it wasn't until I went back and looked at the, at the recording of the game. Uh, that I understood what ha- really happened. The members of the clan who got put on my team grabbed all the power weapons, rocket launchers, shotguns, grenades, whatever, and they found in spots on the map where you can jump outside the map's walls but not trigger the out-of-bounds indicator. So in essence, you are off the field, but you're not penalized for it. At which point, my team is down like four people. All the power weapons are out of the game. And the rest of the team can spawn camp for the for the remainder. Hmm. So there's cheating then. Well, technically nothing was against the rules. 
technically they hadn't triggered any of the game mechanics meant to enforce a rule and therefore it's not possible to call them out and a part of me was like wow this is machiavellian they are so knowledgeable of this map and coordinated so they know who's going for this don't shoot this character he's about to jump out of bounds uh they know just where to aim it's impressive but why in the world would i want to play this game now because that is what Twilight is doing here. She has such a deep, intimate knowledge of the rules, and but she's weaponized them. And at that point, why would anyone want to play when this when someone's going to drop the hammer if they blink wrong? Honestly, what this really signals is that there should be a casual league. Folks who just want to goof around, have a trivia night, you know, hang out with friends. And then a more pro league where... Hot dang, this is where the competition lies. Yeah, I totally agree. And, well, this is one of those cases where I'm going to pull it to Overwatch because Overwatch has that uh, casual, uh, quick play versus competitive. In the competitive scene, you are going to be playing in a competitive setting where winning is quote-unquote everything, but still have fun. Yet... If you're playing in a quick place match where winning is not really everything, it's just if you can dip around and have fun, that's more important and whatnot. But still, it's one of those scenarios where have fun. And I do agree. I do agree. Although even in quick play, it's it is fun to win. Oh true. I mean I've gotten frustrated when I felt like nobody was like I'm the tank advancing with the big shield and I look behind and where's my team gone? I feel like that all the time. <laughs> It's like, where's my team? This is not fun. It's it's that it's that I think it's that balance, being just engaged enough to know that that people are are supporting you, and yet not being vindictive enough that you 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 can't stomach a loss. Mm, true, and it's one of those scenarios where you have to clear up your mind and understand the fact that this is just a game. You're gonna win and lose. You're not playing for money or you're not playing for cash. You're not in a league where winning means a lot to your sponsors. It's funny you mentioned uh, not going to make money, even though apparently now people can even get in on gaming scholarships. Oh, true that. That's a different scenario there. But Well, let's add, let's add a further scenario. What Twilight has given an incentive of fame and popularity. That's going to mess with you right away. But right now... At the time of we're recording, what is it? The Patriots, the football team here in America, are under heavy criticism and scrutiny because they, they video recorded an opposing team during practice, which is a way to get oh, no. views of the, oh, sig- wow. of the signals that the coaches give, plays. And this is the second time they've been caught doing this. You, that's a big no-no. You don't do that. Well, then again, you've added... This is not just a game for them. This is their livelihood. True that. And I, I feel like the system, the system is down. <laughs> I see what you did there. The system is broken because you are simultaneously putting everyone on the honor code, but also putting them under the guillotine if they lose. Yeah, that's the thing there. Like that's just right out cheating. And uh, we've been on this for a bit. Uh, Tara, what about you? You know, we've been talking so much, I kind of forgot where we were. <laughs> uh, basically, Twilight is enforcing the rules with an iron hoof. Ah. And P- P- Pinky just got disqualified. Yes, well, I can't really say much about it. I mean, it's kind of, I guess you could say it's kind of low for Twilight because, you know, it's one of her friends and Pinky just wants to have fun and Twilight's very competitive. And I can actually kind of agree with the, this on a personal level. Well, not like, you know, what Twilight just did, but, like, I'm not a sore loser, but... I know that uh, my cousin, because I'm not to gloat here, but I am pretty good at Smash Bros. No one can beat me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But my cousin, he always tries to beat me at it, but he always loses against me. I always win. But he keeps trying, keeps going. It's like, I can beat you this time. I can beat you this time. He keeps going. And every time he loses, he doesn't give up. He just keeps going. I like that. But also, too, there are some people who I used to have in my life, but not anymore. They were sore losers where I would uh, win, 
and they'd be all mad about it. But when they win, they gloat about it. It's like, yeah, okay, like, we get it. Like, I don't, I'm not a sore loser, but if you're going to be like that, then it takes the fun out of it. True that, true that. And you know what? Um, we're, we're near the end, and uh, I think we can wrap this up pretty neatly. So, anywho, I'm going to carry on. So, Pinky gets disqualified, and we get the new team, Team Twiburst. But with Twi- uh, with Sunburst, he has a score that he needs to keep, like a correct answer score. So, he is also playing for uh, Glory. So, uh, they fight, and somehow, Sunburst here plays the old dirty trick of using the rule book against um, Twilight and tries to get her disqualified. And Sunburst apologizes because he was doing the dirty trick and whatnot. And Twilight just says, How could you do this? What would me? What a pony would do? And realize that she has been doing that to Pinky. And somehow, uh, the rule book says you can reinstate the. Oh, the rule is just silly. Anywho, um, Team Twi Pi gets back into gear and starting back at zero, and now they are playing just for fun instead of low glory. And with that, episode ends. So, anywho, with that, I'm going to you know I want to go first. The episode itself is okay. It's not the best and greatest. I find Pinky here oddly annoying and for Twilight oddly mean spirited which kind of is rare but somehow I find it very entertaining. Let's just say that competitiveness brings out the worst in people. And on to what you mentioned earlier, Tara, about your cousin being a sore... No, that person being a... No, the other people yeah, I used to be friends with yeah, are sore losers. Yeah, sore losers and sore winners. This is a good example. This just recently happened to me. Uh, last Friday, I went to my local card game shop and I played a game of Magic with uh, some new people who are into the game. Uh, they started they, they just recently started the game and build a deck from scratch versus one of my decks that I built from scratch but I have more experience than them so yes I am quote unquote at an advantage here we played and in all honesty I lost I got trounced and I didn't felt angry or mad or felt uh, dis- disrespect uh, I felt the total opposite because I saw some new things that I learned from them building the deck and I felt that, hey, probably I could use this for my game in the future. There's no harm in losing. You learn from losing and you also learn from winning. But don't be a spoiled sport. Don't be a sore loser. Don't be a sore winner. You have to find things in between and also respect your opponent. Nobody likes a jerk. And those are my thoughts. And Silver, what about you? That sounds like the talk of someone who gets teabagged in Halo. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> okay, first first off, we have to team Twi Burst and team Twi Pi. <laughs> like I say, this, this, this is just prime shipping material here. Yeah, uh, at Ponyville Cider Fest, the, two of the guests of honor were Tori Grant and Desiree Selmark, who are storyboard artists. Uh, and they, they basically said, if you ever see a crazy expression, that's probably our doing. <laughs> they were going over time in this year episode. I mean, there are so many funny expressions and just bizarre faces. Twi- Twilight freaking out, Pinky being far too excited. I mean, she her, the edges of her smile are on uh, reaching up to her eyelashes in one scene. Uh <laughs> So the the fun in this is watching the extreme reactions, but it is watching the ponies kind of be unpleasant. It's kind of funny how little the actual trivia uh, takes place. You know, 
you could you could have an entire episode just devoted to seeing these teams pair off uh, or in, play off one another. As it is, it's really focused on Twilight and Pinky and a match made in Tartarus. <laughs> so it's fun. It's not really standout memory. It and what it really, really is at the end of the day is a farewell to Twily Nanas, which I will always prefer to, to Twilighting. That's really all all I've got to say. I think I've expounded quite a bit. All right, then. All right, then. And Tara, what about you? Well, I I really like in this episode. I mean, story wise, it's like we've heard, seen this before and whatnot. But I think they kind of distract it with the comedy and the expressions, which I really enjoyed. I got a lot of giggles out of it, and I liked the expressions. I I enjoyed it. I mean, not really memorable i mean there are some parts that are memorable especially when twilight is shouting banana <laughs> and you know all these shipping names too i mean it i think that, that they're watching us i mean apple dash sun uh no not sunlight um twiburst twiburst yeah, yeah twipi all these all these shipping names it's it shows that they're watching us <laughs> but i always feel like some pony's watching me well, exactly. Well, that is correct. <laughs> one of the trivia questions right. that I love in this one. <laughs> sorry. Uh, one of the trivia questions that I love in this one is uh, when Granny Smith asked the question about apples. <laughs> and Applejack couldn't really answer. <laughs> I know. She, she completely forgets. Like, Applejack, you're an apple. How could you forget? I know. It's like, <laughs> it takes Fluttershy to answer it. And like you can you can see Applejack blushing under her Stetson. And uh and maybe it's like, Yeah, why didn't Big Mac get with Fluttershy? She's perfect. <laughs> well Big Mac can't really well he does talk, but all he says is E up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I well, I, I I'm talking shipping here. Yeah. Oh shipping wise, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> shipping wise. Yeah, but Fluttershy likes them strange, you know. She she likes them exotic. Apparently. <laughs> Although I think we forgot one tiny element, it's in the very final final shot. Oh, look, I, yeah, look I who's remember. Locked, locked out of the trivia. <laughs> Yay, Derpy! Oh man, she, she... yeah, poor Derpy. It's like it's almost like they're saying, you know, we wanted to include her, but this, but we we once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> I think the community and the fandom don't really mind it. Like if she were to play. You know what? No. Technically, if they put her in, there wouldn't be any differences. Oh, no. We, the fans, wouldn't mind. It's the folks outside the fandom who have a negative view of the, of Derpy that uh, would raise holy hand grenades. Uh, they, they, they can shove those hand grenades where the sun don't shine. Oh, my. <laughs> Norman, so aggressive. Yeah. But Was that the correct answer, though? I don't know about the correct, but I, I will applaud his assertiveness. Yes, I do you know, <laughs> you know, it would be really funny if uh, Derpy were to join and she got all of the answers correct. Like she's the highest score. Remember in uh, Derby Racers? Oh yeah, <laughs> that would be good. What if she's, like her score is ninety nine, and that's only because that's as far as the paper <laughs> yeah, goes. I know. Well, let's not forget, too, that one episode where Rainbow Dash's parents get introduced and Rainbow Dash is talking about her backstory. You see Derpy at the top of the pedestal and then she starts working her way down as Rainbow Dash works her way to the top. Oh, that, that's just sad. And her eyes progressively cross more. <laughs> Aww. A tragic tale and then the, then there's a flashback where her eyes have been operated on in Ponyville, but it didn't oh. work. And Oh, you could weave the tragic tale of Derpy through several episodes. Oh, oh it's so <laughs> sad. Oh, I'm sad oh, now. Oh, oh, it's okay, Silver. Yeah. But anywho, but anywho uh, with that, I, I think we call it a night. So anyway, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode review? Well, now that we've seen Twilight go pretty much off the deep end one last time, now we got to reel her back and let everyone know she's going to be okay as a ruler. Therefore, the next episode shall be This Summer Sun Setback. Ooh, this is going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Ooh, ooh, I well, can answer this one. Can they find you on Twitter? 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know the rest. You can carry on. <laughs> oh. I didn't uh -huh. study. <laughs> he did study. Well, there's there's your problem. Well, it is on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill, also on DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, you can support me on Patreon and Ko-fi. Uh, just do a search for Silver Quill and look for the hippogriff icon. Uh, you can find me on YouTube with the search for After the Fact or Silver Quill and I Shall Appear. And I am on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays with comic reviews and editorials. As we, we are steadily approaching the end of the year, and so I think it's time for a year in review of Le Comics. Uh, all right, all right. I don't read much of the comics. Uh, you didn't think much of the comics? No, I don't read much of the comics. I mean, yeah, you just keep bringing this on yourself. <laughs> Ignorance. And anyway, um, Tara, where can the people find you in a form of a question? Well, the answer would be that they could find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324, or they could just do a Google search and they'll find me on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Is that a better answer, Silva? Yes, that is that is acceptable. <laughs> and also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on BunnyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's of the access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, Tristan, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. That is correct. And I have been MLP Silver Quill. And I'm Torterra1324. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. What? Silver. Sorry, that one just slipped out. <laughs> so has anyone even been keeping track of how many points we have? Okay, I guess that's the wrong answer for both of you. It's like, who's not easy anyway? The points doesn't matter. <laughs>